can we just talk about the nails? I mean, like literally, look. Did you see that there's a shortage of glitter in the world? What? Yeah. Uh, what? Well, because it's all on my hands. <laughs> Sorry, world. This is why you can't have glitter this holiday season. Welcome to my Airbnb. I'm excited because this is our holiday episode and I decided we're not gonna make like a full on holiday meal because I'm gonna live out one of my holiday fantasies. So this is a sad story. Josh, give me some sad music. Whenever I go to holiday parties or Thanksgiving parties, I always am the one that's asked, bring the main dish. Why don't you like cook the whole thing? Why don't you just host it? And you know, I love cooking for my friends. Obviously I love cooking, but you know, I kind of have this fantasy about really doing an appetizer and playing bartender all night. I think bartending is actually really fun because you can do some really, really cool drinks and who doesn't love their bartender? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We are going to be making really delicious holiday cocktails and a really awesome cheese ball to go with it. The first thing we're gonna do is work on the cheese ball. So I'm gonna move all of this stuff out of the way. I've got all my delicious fall produce. We're gonna use that to serve our cheese ball. Little thing about cheese balls, and I think part of the reason why I associate cheese ball with holidays is because I remember growing up, my mom, whenever we would go to a holiday party or host one, she would always make cheese balls and everybody in the family loved her cheese ball. And part of it is that my dad had a pecan orchard, and so we actually grew our own pecans. So we would harvest them every November, and then she would make the cheese balls with toasted, freshly picked pecans. And so that is like something that I think is just really, really incredible. What we're gonna use for this is obviously cream cheese because you need that to, to actually like hold everything together. I've got some really, really delicious aged white cheddar. Because it's sweet heat, we need a little bit of sweet. That is gonna come from the cranberries, which are not only gonna give a sweetness and a tartness, and also a really big pop of color, they're also just gonna break it up and you're gonna cut it open and it's gonna look really, really festive. We're also gonna have some rosemary, which we picked from the garden this morning. Jalapenos and moritas, because a little pop of green to go with the cranberries, but then a light, I really love the warmth of a smoky morita. And then obviously some beautiful toasted pecans, not picked from my father's trees, but oh well. They're picked from Mexican trees nearby, I guess, maybe. Mmm, mornings. You may think this is my morning coffee, but actually it's my morning bacon fat. Actually, whenever I make bacon, I always, always, always save the fat because it's amazing, pure liquid gold. <laughs> <laughs> Choco agrees. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do since we're making more bacon is I'm going to add it to my skillet. This skillet is cold you always start bacon in a cold skillet and then just lay them down in the skillet. And then we will start the heat on medium. We don't need it to be like super aggressive. Now let's start the cheese ball. Hey Sebas, you want some of this cheese? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are going to add the cream cheese into a large bowl. This is a pound of cream cheese. It's room temp. It's gonna make it a lot easier to combine everything. And then this is the four ounces of sharp white cheddar. But you can honestly use whatever cheese you like or have if you had mild cheddar or yellow cheddar, that's totally fine. I just like this combination, the white on white, because this will make the cranberries pop more on the inside. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of onion powder, which I really like. I feel like onion powder gives it this kind of almost ranch dressing-like flavor. And then one clove of grated garlic, although this is literally the biggest garlic clove on earth, so I'm actually only gonna use about half of it. Okay, that is 
all the garlic I need. And now I'm gonna flip the bacon. All right, I'm gonna get these chili morritas ready for the food processor. One cup dried cranberries. One cup toasted pecans. Now it's time to add the bacon. So this will be on the inside and the outside. Okay. Now we're ready to divide half. We will use on the outside and this we will put on the inside. I want to just stick my head in that bowl and eat it all, but alas, I am going to now wrap it up and chill it so that it will firm up. I have two pieces of plastic down on my board and now I'm just gonna scrape all of the cheese in the center. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, kind of free for me. We're gonna use the plastic to help us make a ball. All you have to do is literally just pull the sides of the plastic up. I'm gonna gather all the plastic on the top and then twist, and that's gonna help create the ball. And that is going to make my job a lot easier. So it's kind of like a little, just like a little, little package. And then just twist and kind of shape the ball. And I'm gonna throw this in the fridge. You wanna chill this for at least an hour, but Really the, the indicator, the more important thing is that it's firm. And so you can see right now, it's super, super soft. In about an hour, maybe two, it'll be really, really firm. And then we'll be able to roll it around in the chopped pecan, bacon, morita, garlic, orange, rosemary mixture. And it's going to be really, really beautiful and even more delicious. So while the cheese ball is chilling, we're gonna work on the cocktails. Both of these cocktails have syrups because I love flavored syrups. And because it's holiday season and I love apple pie, we are going to make an apple pie spiced mojito, which obviously means that our syrup is going to be flavored with everything that's in an apple pie with the exception of the butter. So what we're gonna do is grab some apples. These are some really pretty heirloom variety of apples that grow here in Mexico. We don't need any like special cuts for this. And the seeds and stems can all go in because we're gonna strain everything out in the end. And because I'm a fan of sparkly, glittery things, the next cocktail is a ginger cranberry sparkler, which means that the syrup is going to have ginger. So I've got some ginger here. Same thing with the apple. I'm just gonna chop it up. Not gonna peel. You don't have to peel ginger. I don't know who started that rumor, but it's completely not true. You're not gonna get any off flavors. No need to pull out a peeler and get that dirty. Just chop it up. Same thing, rough chop. I like intensity, obviously. So I'm using a lot of ginger and chili audible. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, the snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. We're walking in a winter wonderland. So for both of these syrups, we're gonna bring them to a boil, cover, reduce to a simmer, and let them cook for about 15 minutes until they're nice and thick and syrupy. The syrups are done, and now we're just going to strain them into a small bowl. Oh, Josh, it's time for a little montage, a cocktail montage. <laughs>
Okay, so we've got a shaker full of ice. We're gonna drop in our mint. And then we've got bourbon and apple cider and lime juice and syrup and shake. You wanna shake for about 20 seconds. That is the optimal time to dilute the cocktail and also to make sure everything is ice cold. You'll know it's been 20 seconds when your hand starts to hurt because the glass is super cold. My hand is hurting, so that means it is time. Now, strain this delicious cocktail into our prepared glass. Oh, it looks creamy. So, so good. Just drop in a few apple slices in there. Make it really festive. A little mint sprig. All right. And this is our apple pie mojito. Happy holidays. Oh my God. Oh, it's so, so good. I really love this combination of flavors. The apple pairs so nicely with the bourbon. You get those like really subtle, sweet apple pie spicy flavors. And then the lime just like cuts through everything and reminds you that you're drinking a cocktail and not eating a slice of apple pie. Cocktail number two, ginger cranberry sparkler. So I've got a Tom Collins glass. We're gonna fill this with ice. This one is a little bit different because we're gonna add some bubbles at the end because I need some bubbles in my life. All right, now we have cranberry juice. We have our ginger syrup. We have our liquor and orange juice. Now, shaky shaky. And now for the sparkler. Happy New Year! Can't wait to try this. It's so beautiful. This is so incredibly festive. Wow. The way that the ginger and the Prosecco play with each other, you get a little bit of spiciness from the syrup and then you get that like that bubbly effervescent burn from the Prosecco. The cranberries are just sort of like there as a back note, the citrus, it's so incredibly delicious. Mm. Okay, I've had enough, I need to eat something. So I think it's time to bring out that cheese ball. Okay, so you can see it's really firm and it's not sticking to the plastic. That's exactly what you wanna see. If it was sticking to the plastic, then that means it needs more time in the refrigerator, but this is perfect. Now I'm going to put that there. All right, so I'm using gloves just because I wanna pat it down and make it as ball-like as possible. It is called cheese ball after all. And then once you are satisfied with the shape, like that, perfect, then just drop it into the mixture and you want to just press it so that it looks like that. It's almost time to eat. And I cannot wait to eat this thing. Okay, so it's been chilling. It's ready to go. So just carefully lift it up. And don't worry if things fall off, it's totally fine. Not a problem. We're just gonna set this up right there. Actually, and I kind of like the idea of a little bit of this just 
you know, cascading down like freshly fallen snow, which I never have to see again in my entire life because I live in Mazatlan. <laughs> okay, so now you can basically garnish this with whatever you like. I'm including some pear, some apple. I actually found some really cool like tostadas that are kind of like crackers. You basically want to make a board that's just inviting. People will walk into your house and go, ah, appetizers are served. This cheese ball looks pretty damn good, but wouldn't it look better if it had a little sprinkle of some scallion, maybe some extra jalapeno, maybe your guests like it really hot and need more heat. Just throw it on, have a little fun, mess it up. Woo! All right, and this is the Sweet Heat Holiday Cheese Board. Before we eat, before I eat, I want you to see the inside of this thing because it's really, really beautiful. Sebas, come over here. All right, it's time. I'm going in, I'm not gonna talk, getting extra little bacony topping. I'm actually going to build a little, a little sitch here. I wanna taste it with just lots of stuff. So jalapeno, apple, Ritz, cheese ball, Feliz Navidad. Oh my God. It's crunchy, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's savory, it's salty, it's bacony, it's smoky. And it's so good. Oh my God. You have absolutely got to try this. And as always, if you like this recipe, if you like me, if you like this series, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode.